Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com so you're sure to get the latest tips, tricks, and techniques to make awesome Excel dashboards. All right, uh, today I'm going to show you another interesting technique. Uh, I had a lot of great feedback for my easy clustered stacked column chart, and I uh, was showing it to a a uh, coworker at a project that I'm on, and the coworker said, uh, I would really like to put a percentage or some sort of label uh, that hovers over both of the clustered stacked column charts and wanted to know how could you do that. So uh, I'm going to show you how to extend and make your easy clustered stacked column chart a little bit better with some other data labels. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into great detail about creating the clustered stacked column chart, so I really recommend that you visit. Uh, my blog at excel dashboard templates.com and search for how to easily create a clustered stacked column chart. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and show you how we're going to do this one. Um, what we want to do is you want to set up your data in such a way uh, that you are easily creating that clustered stacked column chart. Um, and so I've set up my data here and you can see that's this uh, from A2 to F7. Then I also I have a, another section here of data that are going to represent those percentages. So uh, I've got the actual percentage that we're going to use as a label. And then I've got a value for our X and a value uh, for our Y for each one of those data labels. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a clustered stacked column chart and we're going to add or combine with it an XY scatter chart with only markers. So let me show you how we go about doing that in about 10 easy steps. First you want to highlight your data and you want to go up to your insert ribbon. From your insert ribbon you want to go to the column button and you want to choose the second one here, the stacked column chart. And let's move that over here so you can see that around the data. Uh, now what we've got is, uh, because of how I've set up my uh, labels for the horizontal axis or the categories, um, that's going to create our clustering, and you can learn about that in another post. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to add a data point uh, that's going to start out our data for the uh, center labels that we have. Now, what I like to do is I like to come over here and just grab a really large value. So, for instance, I've got this value right here in I3 of 659. And I'm just going to simply copy this so you can see the dancing ants around it. I hit Control C and I click on my chart and you can go anywhere in the chart and do paste. And it will add a fifth series to the chart. You can see here and that is represented in this light blue color. Now, I do that really large one so it's easy to select. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what you choose, we're going to modify this anyway. So, Okay, so now we want to select the light blue series, series 5, and we want to change the chart type for this. To do that, you're going to go up to your design ribbon, then in your type group, you're going to see this change chart type button. Once you click on that, you want to choose a XY scatter chart, and you want to choose the scatter with only markers, the first one right there and then click on OK. Now you can see it's added a secondary axis, uh, both horizontal and vertical. And what we want to do is then select that data series for Series 5, uh, which is right now just represented by one data point. Um, and now we are going to go modify where this data is placed um, by creating a, a larger series than just that one data point. Uh, so what you want to do is have your chart selected, then go up to your design ribbon, we're going to go to select data. From select data we're going to choose series 5 and then we're going to click edit button. Now here's where we go ahead and create our XY scatter chart series. I'm going to give it uh, the series name. You can type it in here or I've already got percent of budget in my G3 cell. I'm going to click on our G2 cell. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to hit my tab button. I'm going to delete or backspace the X values I'm going to come over into my chart and I've got my X values here set up from H3 down through H7 or H5 or H6 I should say. Uh, and then I'm going to hit my tab button, hit my delete key. I'm going to go add my Y series which are over in the I column and I'm going to do the exact same amount of rows but for column I. And I'm going to click on OK 
and it's important that you click on OK here again, otherwise it will uh, erase what you've just added, which is this percent of budget series. Now you can see, I'm going to unclick those, there is this little uh, asterisk uh, here, and here it has created two data points, not quite in the center and exactly where I want, but that has to do with these other two axes, and we're going to get rid of those in a little bit, and everything will line up in a second. What I want you to do now is select that data series. I want you to hit Control-1. And when you hit Control-1, you're going to have the Format Data Series dialog box pop up. We want to click on the Marker Options area, and then we want to click on None as our marker type. And then let's click on Close. And you can see the markers are gone, but we still have the data points selected. And uh, that's important to keep those selected. And we're going to go up to our Layout ribbon. Then from our Layout ribbon, we're going to add Data Labels. And we're going to do them, oh, let's do them uh, center or above. Uh, it's really not important. We set up our data labels in such a way that they should be above, but let's, uh, let's do them above anyway. And nah, I don't like that. Let's go back and change the data labels, and we'll just do them center. And uh, OK, so now we have our data labels in there, but these aren't the labels that I want. These are the actual values that I've got for our positions. Um, what I want to do is I want to click on one of those, and then click on one of them again. And now you'll notice only one of our data labels are selected. And I'm going to hit my Equals key. And you can see up in the formula bar that Equal key is there. And I'm just going to go click on the data label that I want. And in this case, I want the data label of 114% in cell G3. I'm going to hit my Enter key. And notice it's changed my data label there. I'm going to click on the other one. And if you, it's not selected by itself, click on it twice your equals key, find the data label you want, in this case in G6, and then hit your enter key. Now we've got our data labels created. So uh, we're getting pretty close. Uh, we're almost done. One of the things we want to do to line these up is we need to get rid of our uh, secondary axis and just have them use the primary axis as our uh, positions. I'm going to click on the top one and hit my delete key. I'm going to click on the right one over here and hit my delete key. You notice that the um, values have lined up to the centers of these. Uh, now, I typically want to get rid of this percent of budget. You might want to leave it in there if you think it's helpful. To get rid of it, just click on your legend. Click on your legend a second time for percentage of budget. Hit your delete key, and it goes away. Uh, also, I like to uh, right-click on any of the data series. Go to Format Data Series. And I want to create the gap width of no gap. Let's click on close and see how it looks. Looking pretty good. Uh, we have uh, everything, I think, in there that we were trying to create. So that's a way to add center points into your uh, data series for data labels. Now, let's go take a look at why these data labels are working the way they are. Uh, if you take a look at 114% point two, uh, it has an X value of 1.5 and a Y value of 659.4. Let's take a look at the 1.5 first. So, uh, since this is just a regular 2D column chart, uh, it's going to take this first column as 1, it's going to take the second column as 2, so if our x value, which is the horizontal axis, is at 1.5, it will line up right there in the center. Likewise, for our next one, we have 4.5. If we go 1, 2 columns, 3 columns, because I had a gap in there I wanted to create, 4 columns, 5 columns, right in between 4 and 5 is 4.5, and that's what we have for our x axis for that data point. Uh, now, secondarily, let's take a look at the formula that I created in here. Um, I just, uh, what I did is I, I took uh, and created a sum formula of the larger of our data series. So I know that this actuals is larger. I just did a sum formula and added all those values up since it's a stacked column chart. And then I multiplied it times 1.05, or I increased it by about 5%. You might want to play with some of those numbers. Uh, maybe 10% might work to make sure it's above your columns and it doesn't get hidden or drowned out in the columns. So I'm just creating my Y values, or just a simple formula of sum plus 5% uh, of that sum. Same thing for the second one. We've got a sum of the C values, or C7 through F7 times 1.05%. Uh, and so that will position on our y-axis, which is what we have over here. So the very uh, the, this leftmost one is 659. You can see it's kind of right in the center, hovers above both columns. 
and likewise the other one's at 570 which hovers above the total of both columns so that's a way to add some other descriptive data labels on the center of your stacked column chart clustered stacked column charts um, and once again uh, make sure you check out my channel um, or my blog to understand a little bit more about how we're creating these and why our data positions uh, will create this very easy clustered stacked column chart and uh, how to combine that with an XY scatter chart. Once again, this is Steve Equals True. Thanks for visiting my site. Also, uh, please don't forget to sign up for my YouTube channel. Thanks.